Welcome back. In the last video, we had this problem of the view getting a little bit ugly with our navigation as we became smaller and smaller with our viewport. How can we fix this? And here, I'm going to show you a topic that I actually cover in my next course. But just because it might be useful for this case, I'm going to introduce you to something called media queries. And media queries allow us to create responsive websites and tell our web pages what to do when the size of our screen gets small or big. And I'll link to this website over here. But essentially what it allows us to do with media queries, we can have devices, tablets, laptops, wearables that have different screen sizes and tell it how to display our web page based on those sizes. For example, here, it shows us what our viewports will be for iPhone 4 and iPhone 4S. And using this syntax of at media only screen and giving it some minimum device width and max device width, we can tell it how to display our page or have CSS properties specific to just this view size. That is, minimum view size is going to be 320 pixel and max is 480 pixels. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of these based on different devices and viewports. Now, things like CSS Grid and Flexbox actually resolve a lot of this, but I want to demonstrate just one use case with our little example. That is, this contacts getting smushed. So let's create our own media query for our navigation. In order to do that, all we need to do is say at media. We say only screen. And this is saying, what do we want our media query for? And you can do things like print here, for example, when you're printing something. But 99% of the time, you're just going to have screen. And here, we're going to say end. We'll say that max width is going to be 600 pixels. That is, use this CSS properties that we're about to define right here only when max width is 600 pixel. That is, as soon as this is less than 600 pixel in width, I apply these properties here. So I'll say main nav will have a font size. We can do different things here, but let's just say a smaller font size. And maybe we'll do padding of zero, just so they're closer together. If I save this and refresh, look at that. Everything fits in because our font size is smaller and we've removed any extra padding that we may have. But notice here as I make things bigger. You see that? As soon as I pass 600 pixels, we restore our defaults with larger font size. Look at that. So using media queries, we just made our nav bar more responsive. Nice and easy. And this is a common pattern that I recommend with your navigation. That is having our nav element with an unordered list and an li list. Our main nav, which will be a flex box. And we'll have a push class that uses this margin left auto to push whatever we want to our nav to the right side, usually something like contacts or login to have it all the way to the right. So hopefully this wasn't too bad. Like I said, you don't need to memorize this. You can even copy the code that I'll leave for you at the end of these videos. Once you get used to this syntax, you now have a solid foundation to build the navigation. But we have three more things to go. So let's get to that in the next video.